Welcome to the second part of the 1% Linear Challenge or the Golden Path, what I call it here on YouTube. Basically, this is my video blog, vlog, there we go, our vlog of trying to achieve 1% growth month after month after month with penis enlargement. So essentially, I'll be going from my starting point of eight and a quarter inches long up to about nine and a quarter inches long over the course of the year. Essentially, the main idea is that if you can get minuscule improvements month after month after month, we will see macro changes over the course of the year. So one inch sounds like a lot, but like when you break it down month to month to month, it is not that much. Personally, I believe most guys can gain between a half to an inch and a half, depending on their consistency and a bit of self-awareness when they're coming to their routine, regardless of uh, time doing penis enlargement and their starting size. If we just look at the average male, we're saying five and a half inches. If they put on a half an inch in a year, that's a 9% change in size. If they put an inch on in a year, that's an 18 percent change in size. So for me, at my well-endowed size, saying that I can grow 12% or an inch in a year is really not that crazy. I'm going to explain the things that I've taken out of my routine and have added. I'm going to explain my results and why they were so spectacular. It's not actually real growth and we'll talk about it later on. And then I'm going to talk about things I want to try in the next month to see if I can eke out a little bit more than 1% because why not, you know? I'm changing things constantly with my own routine and this YouTube channel. If you're looking for like what I think is the fundamental keys to penis enlargement, check out in the books in the description below, BD's Big Book of Length, BD's Girth Expansion Pack, you can get them in a bundle. Essentially it is what I think is the definitive way for penis enlargement currently without all this testing. It will be updated as I prove my findings, but for the time being, if you're just looking for something that is somewhat scientific and pretty much no nonsense like what I'm doing right now is probably your best bet. And I'd be a bad businessman if I didn't bring this up. We have three new supplements at Leviathan Wellness. Fortitude, our libido booster. Safeguard, this is our soft tissue support. So this is what's gonna have NAC in it. It's going to help with tendons, ligaments, potentially uh, recovery for penis enlargement. And then we have Shield, which is our nerve support. So increases sensitivity, a little bit of uh, performance, like when it comes to reaction times, potentially could help with death grip. Hank is gonna do a much more in-depth dive than I ever could on his channel, so make sure you check that out as well. The original plan was to start with tunica scrapes, then we were going to do BFR compressions, which is just a variant of BFR massage. Then we would do semi-erect stretching for about five minutes to 10 minutes with 15 sets or 15 second sets, there we go. So with 15 second sets. Then the Apex, which is my favorite length device currently, for about 30 minutes total, five to six sets. And then we would finish off the day with interval pumping with the PMP Smart Pump. I guess I should also mention that I would be doing BFR clamping immediately following this routine for one set of 10 minutes. What has changed from this routine is first, I was saying I was going to be doing two days on, one day off between my work schedule and just being a tad bit overworked. I dropped that down to like every other day. Because tunica scraping requires lotion, at least the way I teach it, you are gonna have issues stretching because you'll have a bit of lubrication on your penis unless you completely wash it off before the semi erect stretches. So I just omitted them completely for the time being. I might add them back in with or right before interval pumping just to see if it does anything. Then I also cut back on clamping, but it's more so that my routine's taking me a bit too long already, so something had to go. So taking the 10 minutes off at the end, probably not a big deal. And then this is something I talked about in another video, the BTC stretching that you might actually be hiding gains. I personally think I'm hiding at least a quarter of an inch of my length due to tight ligaments. So I've added in BTC stretching on my off days. So basically what you do, stand up, take your penis, pull it between your legs. And then my entire video on the subject has three or four different examples for different sizes and different variations on how to target the suspensory ligaments. But that's what I'm doing like 15 minutes total while laying in bed. So like I can play with my phone, 
and stretch at the same time. Supplementation. I did fall off of this a bit, but I've recently got back onto it. I'm still taking Sistanch and Demenia, or is it Demania? Let me know in the comments. I've been still taking Leviathan Wellness, Virility and Vitality, and then I've recently added in Fortitude. I have not added the other two new things in yet just because, well, I'm already swallowing a mouthful of pills. There's only so much you can take, right? And additionally, I just want to make sure that I am getting the expected results from each supplement on their own. So. The main idea with this is that we're trying to have a very active penis. So basically everything I'm taking is some kind of aphrodisiac, which makes blood just flow to your genitals much more easily. It's much easier to get aroused. So I will literally be having like high frequency activity. So like chubs at the gym, for example, more often than not. As for prescription drugs, I am taking five milligrams of Cialis. It is probably not needed with everything else I'm on, but because I'm on a relatively strict diet right now, five milligrams of Cialis is keeping my erection quality constant. I did stop taking it for a couple days just to test out the other supplements. I will say there is a bit of a difference without Cialis in my system, but the overall activity stayed the same. So like I may not have been as hard erect, but with the other stuff I was taking, I was getting erect just as frequently. So that's the main difference I've noticed so far. Now the part that you guys care about, my results. In the first 28 days, I put on a quarter of an inch in length, going from eight and a quarter to 8.5. Now, I suspect that 80% of this has been erection quality improvements. In January, I caught RSV, which is a relatively mild, but annoying <laughs> respiratory virus so like I was struggling to sleep and I was just you know fighting an infection so my erection quality kind of tanked for a couple weeks in January and then I measured right after that so my size shrunk due to the lack of blood flow and like healthy tissue so to say now that I got back to my penis enlargement stuff started taking all these aphrodisiacs my erection quality has skyrocketed but that does not mean I didn't actually gain any size. I am definitely a bit longer than when I was before RSV. The problem is, is that since I wasn't measuring with the curve, it's hard to know exactly how big I was to start. But that's not really the point of this demonstration or this series, is that I'm just trying to show how much you can gain in a year rather than showing my entire progress because it progress is rarely linear that's what a lot of guys don't realize in this space is that you're not always going to be at your peak size stuff is going to happen for example i caught covid your ligaments can change your hip position can change and you can just get out of shape and you can technically lose size because of all this stuff so if you're ever like following an influencer that says their size has been consistent like for more than five years they're probably full of shit um, that's just what I've noticed though. It's not not impossible. <laughs> it's not impossible to stay the exact same size the entire time, but I know you guys have bad dick days. So keep that in mind, okay? And as I said, current size, eight and a half inch bone press with the curve. With my increase of erection quality, my curve gets more pronounced. It's how I've always been. I don't really want to lose my upwards curve because it, it's just very good for vaginal sex. And then, I don't know, that's a good aesthetic if you ask me. Then I've also said I gained 3% in 28 days. If I keep this up, I'm going to put on 36% of, wait, 12 times three. Yeah, that's 36. So 36% of my length, so we'll say 8.25 times 1.36. That put me at 11 and a quarter of inches. That is highly unsustainable i'll be lucky if i actually break nine this year based off of like you know global trends and metrics and everything like that but so far so good it gives me a bit of cushion if i do have an off month that being said i probably should consider like 8.4 to 8.5 my actual starting size but like i don't have that as my starting size so that'd be a little it's disingenuous in two different ways, right? So I'm not gonna worry about it too much. This month is actually what's gonna be make or break for this routine. If I don't put on a 16th of an inch or more in this next 28 days, 
I'm gonna have to tweak some things to make sure I stay, um, you know, constantly improving. But just based off of my routines lately, I don't think I need to tweak anything. That being said, I am going to play around because I think you guys know me by now. I cannot leave well enough alone. Um, let's see. Which is why I shaved my beard. Why did I shave my beard? Oh, anyway. <laughs> now, this is what I've learned. Semi-erect stretches are pretty cool for one main reason is that I am much longer outside of pumping. So, like, I'll pump up with interval pumping and then... I'm probably about a quarter an inch to a half an inch longer just because like the fatigue is this way instead of this way. So it actually starts to stretch out that way in the pump more. It's really interesting. So if anyone else is doing semi-erect stretches and then pumping afterwards, let me know if you notice more length rather than girth right after a session. Another thing is, is that I'm noticing less edema doing semi-erect stretches before pumping. Very interesting. I don't exactly know why, other than like there's already some fatigue. It might be kind of like tunica release in that regard. Um, semi erect stretching seems to make my penis more active for the rest of the session. So, like while I'm in the apex, I'm basically semi erect the entire time. I have like no stimulation whatsoever. I'm usually just trolling on Reddit, you know? So, like, there's definitely something to semi-erect stretching, at least in my experience, beyond just more uh, intensity with fatigue. There seems to be some kind of signal that releases vasodilation at the very least to cause like, you know, a thicker flaccid for the time being. I was basing this off a video that I titled Cell Stretch Theory, what might actually lead to efficient gains, but I don't know if that's the case. We won't know if that's the case until we do like an actual autopsy on a penis. That's probably never happening. So we can only do black box testing. Yes, I got in a fight with someone on Reddit about this. I don't care if it's not exactly accurate. We're just trying new things and see if it makes my dick bigger or not. Okay. <laughs> um, while I started this routine, I somehow magically stopped jerking it less. I don't know if it was just like, I've been so busy with work. I do not feel as compelled because I'm not as bored or my relationship with masturbation has changed to a point where I just don't think I need it as much because it used to be like a stress release. And on top of that, my frequency with my wife has been much more frequent. We're talking like double like my normal sex frequency compared to like a year ago. So like I'm getting satiated much more often so I don't really need to masturbate as often. But really what it feels like is that just masturbation in general has gotten boring for me. It's not that sex hasn't gotten boring for me, masturbation has. So I don't know, but what I'm really saying is, is between all the aphrodisiacs I'm taking and less masturbation, my morning wood is just ridiculous. And I, it could just be because of the routine too, there's a lot of variables, but between the changes in morning woods, between between the changes in, you know, activity down there, having a less tired and tired penis from masturbation is probably going to help gains a bit. Now, remember, I'm getting a lot of sex. If I was not having a lot of sex, like four to five times a week, then I would probably be masturbating more just because like there is health benefits to masturbation unlike no fap. You need to at least ejaculate three days a week to make sure you do not develop prostate issues long term. That and masturbation is going to help with like erection, erection stamina. That's actually a good way to put it. So like your erection staying power, if you don't masturbate, you will have less erection staying power because it's kind of like cardio for your penis. It's endurance for your penis. And then you won't last as long orgasmically. So you'll be able to ejaculate sooner or on the flip side, you will not ejaculate as fast if you masturbate often just because you are kind of working that tissues now i'm not talking like you know only masturbating to porn developing death grip but like you know helping with the sensory overload from sex masturbation will help with that and i already talked about this part a bit the suspensory ligament i've added in i'm almost positive i can gain a quarter of an inch of at least perceived length by just adding in 15 minutes of stretching of the suspensory ligament every other day we will see if that is a thing long term. And then this is kind of out of left field, but I've been cutting for the past, 
oh god, I don't know, at least three months. My like physical size, so like my body, while leaner, my penis does not look that much bigger on it. And this is kind of a problem for guys with big thighs and big hips, is like since that's like the real frame around your penis, if you have muscular legs, your dick's just not gonna look that big, no matter how much cutting you do. So there's been a bit of a talk that you wanna get lean first, and it's not that I disagree with that, but like temper your expectations. If you have naturally huge thighs like myself, your dick's not gonna look that much bigger from cutting, right? Same thing with me, or like I have a bit of a wagon anymore, you can't really tell, but like from here to here is over nine inches. So like my side profile <laughs> is going to be, you know, not that impressive when I got a nine inch wagon and then an eight inch protuberance. So just that kind of size discrepancy is not going to really make me look impressive, at least in that way. It's not like I really care, I'm married, but you get the idea. Uh, just to be clear, if you are overweight, get cut. Like that is not even get cut, get healthy. So if you guys are overweight, please take the time to get healthy. I'm telling you, your erections are gonna be so much better. You're gonna last longer in bed and you'll just feel better in general because you're not carrying around a bunch of dead weight. This is the best I have felt since I broke my toe back in August. So like I got fat between August and November and I worked it off and I finally feel athletic again. So trust me when I say this, I know what it's like to be overweight. It's not fun, but you also kind of forget how far you've fallen. So it's a bit of self-awareness to make sure that you stay in the game. Increasing weight and pressure. Now, I'm still a firm believer that you do not want to increase weight or pressure very often, but this time around, I've been slowly building up the tension on my apex. So the best way to put it is that I'll start at like eight pounds of tension, go up to 10, go up to 12, work back from 10 down to eight. Basically a pyramid. This used to be called riding the fatigue on the old forms. So basically you work up to a very heavy weight when it becomes unbearable, you start taking the weight off. We're kind of doing the same thing, but much less drastic. We're not gonna really be trying to bear as much pain as possible or discomfort as possible, but I just slowly increase it, get to my working range, come back down, nothing crazy. Then what I've noticed with this is well, one, the tissue is more sufficiently worked. The weird thing is, is that most science shows that the more you stretch a tissue, since it's degrading, you'll actually need less work over time. So this is a bit counterintuitive to what the science is saying. I'm still not exactly sure why, um, but I've noticed a bit of a difference because of that. Um, this is how I did it for like my first inch with hanging. I would work up a bit and like work back down a bit throughout the session. And it was a good way to increase overall volume. My volume is still very low compared to the, the I'm doing a 30 minutes now. I did at least an hour to an hour and a half beforehand, and I'm still seeing roughly the same rate of gain, so I don't know how much is it actually worth all that volume. Anyway, more pressure with pumping. So like, again, I don't really like increasing pressure all that much, but I went from 10 HG inches of mercury to about, uh, let's say 12 inches of mercury. I just noticed a bigger after size with less edema and that might just be because of the semi-erect stretching but like there's a probably like a lot of factors going on is really what i'm trying to say could have faulty equipment too so like my gauge could be slowly losing its calibration over the years so like the 10 that it's supposed to be is actually the 12 on the uh, cylinder you know on the gauge so it might not actually be that accurate the reason why I increased pressure is because I was talking with Hank, I think it was on the live stream, how he said it should feel kind of like a very intense, almost painful erection like you would get during puberty. And that is exactly correct. I noticed that I wasn't really getting those at 10 HG anymore. So yeah, well, that could have been like strength adaptation or that could have been just a faulty gear. So like I could try to probably pull one of them out of the returns from Peak Mel Physique and try it out. But for now, I'm not really going to really push it too much. Another weird thing that I should have brought up is that as if I pump right after like my length session, 
I can handle like maybe two thirds of the pressure. Otherwise it is so achy if I do my apex stuff and then pump immediately after. It's just like, it just hurts almost. It's like real intense. I can't really describe why other than like the tissues are already so fatigued that this stimulus is just like over the top. So like you can't really push it. So like what I've been doing is like I've been doing the extender stuff and then I've been doing the interval pumping about two hours later. Like I'd try to lift and then do the interval pumping. No issues then. So something to play around with. I'm still trying to learn. I guess a few things I'm going to try moving forward is I'm going to try to bad in the tunica scrapes and BFR clamping again, maybe on the off days just to like, you know, get the volume in and do an active recovery almost. And then, <clears throat> and then I wanted to try CBD oil again. Like I've done a lot better this month, but the real issue is that we got an office and we launched three products in the past two weeks. So I've let the PE stuff slack a bit. Not that I wasn't doing my stuff, but I wasn't doing like my full routine. So what I'm really trying to say is even though I've did 80% of what I prescribed, I still like destroyed my target goal. So like setting a plan is very helpful. Don't get me wrong. But if you have to change it on the fly, don't be afraid to. If you get the work in, it's much more important, right? So that should be the main takeaway from this video. Get the work in when you can. If you got to adapt, adapt as you go. Um, yeah, let me see how this turned out in post. If not, I'm going to have to redo it because this felt herky-jerky. So hopefully I'll see you in the next one.